Good morning from the edge of the Caribbean Sea here in Lecheria, Venezuela. What a beautiful spot. I'm getting flashbacks to when I used to live in Miami and would head out to the beach for sunrise. Nothing quite like the start of the day by the sea in this part of the world. But we've got more 737s to go fly for part three of this Venezuela series. We'll be spending a little more time with the 200 that's in maintenance here, joining up with some pilots in training as they do some practicing, and then hitching another cockpit ride on the 737-400 back to Caracas. Plenty of action in store for you, in other words, so let's head back to Barcelona Airport and Avior's HQ. Back in the Avior hangar here in Barcelona to spend a little bit more time with this 737-200, and today they are working on a lot of different things. You can see there's tons of people here. The aircraft looks amazing. If you, if you look up close, you see all these brand new parts they put in. They've basically renovated this thing. It's a brand new aircraft, even if it's 40 plus years old. And with this beautiful new livery as well, it's, it's so nice to see that they're putting in so much effort, so much time, so much money into this beautiful old bird, giving it a new lease of life. And you know, it means it's gonna be flying for quite a while still. It's a vote of confidence in this 200, and so it's not too late to catch this thing. They said they're gonna roll it out pretty soon. It's almost done. This is the culmination of nearly a year's worth of work, a heavy check, various other processes to bring it into a state where it can fly for many more years, potentially, successfully, overhauling just about everything, new parts all over the place. And right now, the work that we're seeing back here, which is interesting, is that they're about to turn on this APU for the first time that's been newly installed, overhauled, and they're putting the finishing touches on that before they turn it on and see how it goes. So they say it's gonna be back in service in February. These things can slip, especially with an older aircraft like this, and not to mention in a place like Venezuela where transactions, acquisition of spare parts can be a little bit more complicated than in other places. But exciting times, this thing is coming back to the air soon. I feel like I need to come back and catch it having seen it in this part of the process. They also did mention that it will probably have a period of adjustment where things may come up as it's in service that need to be addressed, minor things generally. Um, so it'll be a while before it's sort of just back to normal flying a regular schedule, I guess. But they're getting ready to finish this thing up and then they're gonna bring in a 400 to do some work on it next. Lots of aircraft here waiting to fly again. Not all have certain futures, but they're doing their best to activate what they can. And they have some aircraft in Colombia as well, in Cali, that were operating for an airline that Avior started in Colombia, which is now defunct. They're planning to bring some of those back too. So we might see a much bigger and more active Avior in the near future. Got myself a safety jacket and I'm gonna try sitting down in the business class which I didn't have a chance to yesterday. I'm not sure if these seats are ready to be sat in actually but they look okay except for one which is missing the seat cushion for now. They're working on everything in here just as they are outside putting all kinds of finishing touches putting down the flooring and I actually love this I love this carpeting actually it's really 
kind of subtle, but nice colors when you look up close. It comes up nice on the camera. Anyway, here is the business class, which just takes me back in the best possible way. This reminds me of flying first class in the US in the 90s. And look, that's a great thing, I think. It's just big, comfy seats, no crazy electronics, no entertainment, no power, but just comfy, old school nostalgia. I think anyone who grew up in the 80s, 90s, even 2000s, will love sitting down in these seats. If only this were in regular service and I could open these windows, we'd have that amazing, bizarre nowadays to look at because we're so used to these bigger engines. View back onto the wing. And uh, the only problem with the 200 is it's a tough choice whether to sit in the front and look back at that amazingly old school looking wing and engine or to sit in the back and catch those crazy thrust reversers, crazy by our standards now anyway, but they work well. So you got to plan a couple of flights in order to do both, I think, but I'm a big fan of this business cabin for sure. Es para saber dónde va cada uno. El manual te dice dónde va a colocar a cada uno y cómo tiene que, que ser. Wow. Sí. ¿Y cuántos hay en total? De estas Parece. son muchas. Son sí. cientos. Sí. Se, se pegan según lo que dice el manual. They're doing all kinds of work to this aircraft, and that even includes all new stickers for everything. This is quite a complicated exercise all on its own. I don't know about you, but this is my first time seeing an APU fully removed from an aircraft tail. How cool. And of course, they haven't forgotten about polishing the engine inlets. Again, it's just so nice to see a 200 get this kind of a freshening up. I'm here with Jose Gomez, chief pilot at Avior, and he's been taking me around all over to see everything there is to see here in Barcelona with Avior's operation and the maintenance of this 737. ¿Cuántos aviones van a tener volando? ¿Cuál es el plan para el 200 y los otros 400? ¿Me puedes contar un poco de eso? Por ahora los, los planes que tenemos, como ya han visto, este, tenemos acá un 200 que está en mantenimiento ahorita, están terminando la pintura, parte de los motores, para luego salir a volar eh, a principios de febrero de este mes que viene. Lamentablemente, bueno, no, no, no va a dar chance ahorita que, que lo vayas a volar. Sí. Pero te has invitado para la próxima, quizás el mes que viene o en un par de meses que puedas venir hay nuevamente. Que, hay que volver, claro. claro. Y bueno, los planes ahorita principalmente sería este avión que empiece a volar y luego tenemos el que viste afuera en el hangar, fuera del hangar, el Yankee Victor 3012, que está esperando solo por motores para empezar a volar nuevamente. A final de este mes o principios del otro, eh, estamos viajando a Cali para traer uno de los aviones, otro 737-400 que teníamos allá, para traerlo y también incorporarlo a nuestra flota. Y esos son los planes que, que te podría comentar a corto plazo ya que, que, que tenemos como tal. Yo podría decir o arriesgarme a decir que ya para este, este año, finalizando este año, pudiéramos tener unos 4 o 5 aviones ya en línea de vuelo okay. nuevamente. Este, creciendo, intentando crecer nuevamente y convertirnos otra vez en, en lo que éramos la aerolínea prácticamente principal de Venezuela antes de la pandemia que, que bueno, que, que, que nos golpeó con mucha fuerza y bueno, pero estamos trabajando ya en todos esos planes para, para recuperar el, el puesto que teníamos acá en Venezuela Ok, qué bien, muchas gracias Super, eso es lo que le estoy peleando a leyendo las cláusulas, te habla de la cláusula 1, 2, 3 y 4 Here we have two current pilots who are in the process of becoming captains. These pilots are helping to train two incoming pilots who are going to be receiving their type rating to fly the 737-400 for Avior. And they're doing that today by running through some of the pre-flight procedures and more on a grounded 400 out here on the ramp. la palanquita roja esa, álala y déjala hacia ti. Ella cae sola. Si en algún caso abren la puerta del avión, acostúmbrense a esto, a pasarle el seguro. 
aunque tengamos la clave, aunque tengamos la clave del avión, la clave tiende a, tiende a, a reaccionar en, en 50 o 60 segundos, depende, hay unas que 55 segundos y eso. Pero vale, y tú claro. lo vas a hacer. Sin, okay. sin lista de chequeo todavía. O sea, solamente los no, procedimientos, los preliminares y pre sí, exacto. Okay. Desde eléctrica de power hasta, hasta... Igualito, recuerda que eso tiene una protección. O sea, claro. la puedes colocar y si no entra es porque está muy pasado y tiene muy poquito. ¿no? O, o, lo, o lo pones y no lo aguanta, si no lo aguantas te lo va a hacer todo. Bueno, pasamos las barras del APU. Si, si vamos a trabajar con el APU durante mucho tiempo, tenemos que colocar el... No, en realidad el... tienes que poner siempre dar una bomba para que la ayude. Normalmente la FOR, la AF... ¿Y aquí. la central no? Si tienes en el central, sí. Que encienda FOR y APU y no... No, mira, yo te lo pasé para que llegaras y adelantas tiempo. No, te, te agarras, apagas. No es que no confíe en esa persona, pero igual la apagas y vuelves a pasar. Okay. Eso es muy importante. Muy importante. Ahora, eso. Eh, es off y luego inmediatamente. Cuéntame sobre el 200, ¿cómo es? El 200 eh, es una experiencia. Es una experiencia, es volarlo, es distinto. Es distinto, lo, los controles son distintos. Es un poco más pequeño que este 400. Este, pero la experiencia es única. Es un poco más ruidoso. Eh, en cuanto a ruido, es un poco más ruidoso por la cuestión de que el motor es JT8. Un poquito más ruidoso, pero es una experiencia de verdad. Sí. Tuve la oportunidad de hacerle, te, te comentaba que tuve la oportunidad de hacerle el último vuelo al Yankee Victor 2823, 737 200 y antes de que, bueno, que descansara un poquito allí porque ya voló bastante. Yeah. Wow. Sí, fue ahora el 29 de diciembre del año pasado. Okay. El avión, sí. Es una experiencia, o sea, la, los aviones son distintos, pero el 200 de verdad que tiene algo que nos llama mucho la atención volarlo. ¿Hay cosas específicas sí. que son distintas entre... Eh, sí, claro, la, por lo menos la potencia. La potencia varía. Entre estos motores, sí, varía la potencia, el 200... Es mucho más eh, maniobrable. Este es un poquito más de computadoras que lo puedes llevar. Este es un poquito más de su computadora, mm -hmm. su piloto automático y esas cosas. Okay. Este es más, 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 ¿cómo diría? Más técnico. Este es más técnico, que él es un poco más manual yeah. llevarlo. Pero de volarlo es perfecto. Eh, sí, eh. All right, folks, for those of you that have made it this far into the video, I have a special treat for you. It's a giveaway, and we're giving away this very special collectible Avior Airlines 737-200 safety card. Now, in order to enter the giveaway, it's the usual. You have to like this video, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, and leave a comment mentioning Venezuela, whatever it might be. Now, there's one more thing you need to do in this case because we're doing this with Avior, and they were kind enough to give us some of these safety cards. They're legitimate, they're not stolen. So what you need to do is go over to Avior's Instagram account and follow them there. And I'll put a link to that down below in the description so you can get there easily. And once you've done all that, you'll be in the running. We'll pick one at random. Actually, we'll pick two. I got two to give away. And uh, you might be the lucky winner of one of these very collectible safety cards. So now back to our regularly scheduled programming. Thanks for watching so far. Time to head back to Caracas, this time with a new flight crew but the same aircraft as we came in on. I'll just be quiet and leave you to enjoy that. Hey, 
there's the plane, time to go get on board and head back to Caracas.
minimums, minimums. 100, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. So that's it for our time with Avior. I hope you enjoyed getting this inside look at an airline we don't usually see much about. From what I can see, it's a very good operation they're running in spite of the challenges here. So the big question now is, will I finally catch a 737-200 that takes to the skies? Make sure to subscribe and like this video so the algorithm sends you next week's release so you can find out what happens next. And please leave a comment to let me know what you thought about all this. Does it make you want to visit Venezuela to do some flying? And if you live in Venezuela, what do you think about flying within the country? As always, thank you so much for watching and coming along on this adventure. In Caracas, for Flight Radar 24, I'm Gabriel Lee.